a video that um, has been six months in the making. It's the long, long story of our... <laughs> Tinker wants to join me. Let's see if I can get him so that you can actually see him. And he's not just a wall of fur. Yes. Um, last October, if you've watched uh, our Gloom and Despair video, you're already familiar with um, this part, but I'm just going to catch everyone up quickly. Last October, we took a week of vacation in hopes of doing the retaining wall on our um, hillside. And in the midst of that, we found out that the water line that we had paid a contractor to lay was leaking. So, um, at the end of that vacation weekend, we rented a trencher uh, against better judgment because it had been raining all weekend, all week long of our vacation. It was pretty miserable. And um, we tried to run the trencher to lay new water line. Uh, the trencher got hung up in the clay several times and eventually we um, got it hung up so bad that we had to call a wrecker to come and get it out. So this video is a summary of the past six months as we tried to um, redo the water line um, with having no uh, practical knowledge of how to do so, educating ourselves on how to do it, making uh, a lot of mistakes, especially on the couplers we should use. Trying to figure that out was the biggest issue. But happily, um, we now have a happy ending and our water line is finally connected with no leaks. So I hope you enjoy this six month journey uh, through this video. In early November, we got a break in the weather, rented a sturdier trencher, and thankfully we were much more successful. We worked all weekend, even by headlight, but we were able to get the ditch dug so we could lay the new water line. Hoping to beat the winter weather, my husband dug the last six foot section three feet deep by hand, but we didn't beat it. In early January, Brian broke his ankle, had two surgeries, and was confined to a wheelchair. It was now up to the kids and me. With each warm spell, we try to couple the lines, fighting with the wrong size couplings, the wrong type couplings, and blow torches that wouldn't stay lit. So here we are digging out the water line for the third or fourth time because each time we have to call a halt then dirt falls back in on it. We found both ends. Now we're just trying to make the hole wider so that when I do Get the right size fittings. There'll be room down in there to work. Okay, it is April. What would it be? Twelfth, uh, I 12th, think. Yeah, it's April. 12th. April twelfth, and we're gonna try this waterline connection for the umpteenth time. Went back and got what I hope is the right size and everything I need, so I'll show it to you before we get started. Joden is helping me today. Lovely weather. Yeah. Makes me feel so much better about what I'm doing here. <laughs> okay, so these are brass three-quarter inch bibbed um, connector fittings for water service lines. Um, you use them with a double clamp on each side so each connection takes four clamps. The clamps uh, 
go in alternating directions so that these heads can uh, butt up against each other and make it stronger. So I've got my lighter for the propane torch, my screwdriver for the clamps, and of course you can hear the wind I'm sure. So that's going to make the blowtorch awesome, but we'll do what we can do. Fittings that go by um, iron pipe size rather than copper tubing size. Hex takes copper tubing size. Um, PVC, CB, CPVC all take copper tubing size. This takes iron pipe size. And that was pretty tricky to find. To find brass fittings that would do 200 and above PSI that were barbed. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to heat up the end of the fitting, the blowtorch. Mm -hmm. Yep, there's our pipe. Alright. SF bad. We need a button like in Stanley Parable. Do you want my other glove? No. Those bees aren't swinging. Grab the hammer. Sienna's holding the pipe while we wait on Joden to uh, turn on the water at the meter. We're flushing the line for the um, flushing the line to try to get the dirt out of it before we do the final coupling. Oh my goodness! Look at how dirty that is. Clean now. Oh my goodness, that was like. Okay, turn it off! That was as red as. It was very, very dirty. Oh, I'm glad we did that. <laughs> this is the last fitting, last coupling. Down at the side of the trailer where we're going to tie into the original 
water line that the contractor put in. It's uh, disheartening to look at his original line because it's um was outright gouged and flattened and deformed up at the top. We've got about wasn't bad down here. three feet of original line that goes to the water meter that if I had realized it was that bad we would have just not tied into it. I was really hoping once we got down here that there wouldn't be the same issues, but not as bad. it's not quite as bad, but it's still nicked. It's just really something. We paid him a lot of money to get this site ready. And then when we asked him to come back, he refused at first. Said that he had never had pipes leak in his life and that we must have done something wrong. He asked us about the plumbing we'd done inside the mobile home and we told him we'd plumbed it with PEX and we were getting ready just to test it and then immediately he starts blaming us for hooking our plumbing up to his water service lines that we would have blown out the water service line if we didn't have a pipe open somewhere for the water to come out huh? I'm I, don't most people I mean? I mean you have to have it sealed to test it I, I don't even know what he was trying to say granted I'm not too smart in these things but that seemed ridiculous and frankly, we hadn't even turned the water on to the mobile home. The only place it was hooked into was at the main valve where it was shut off. We had never flipped that valve. So I, I didn't see his logic there at all. But he just... He would not listen to reason. Moment of truth. Took a picture of the meter. It was one nine and like six zeros. And hopefully it just goes a few numbers up and stops. Okay. It stopped now. Four point four. Oh, it was upside down. I'm upside down here to move. You can flip it. It was actually a six. It's not moving. 67.4. It's not moving. It's not moving. It's not moving. But, uh, yeah. It's not moving. It's not moving. It's not moving. We did it. We're play the lotto. We're gonna play sixty-seven four, <laughs> six seven four. Yes, lucky numbers. About twenty minutes has gone by and it hasn't changed. Well, I checked it about a half hour later. It's still read sixty-seven point four. I'm gonna leave it on overnight and um, come back tomorrow and do some more work and check it again. Um, and probably check it day after day after day. I'm so uh, leery. But um, the other leak, when we were checking the contractor's work, um, the dial was moving at a click about a tenth of a gallon uh, every few seconds or so. Um, and this hasn't moved yet. So. It's at least a whole lot better than it was. And I just, oh my goodness. 
can't express how I feel. Okay, this is the first connection up by the meter and it's it's definitely wet. Yep, it's leaking right here at the original pipe. Uh, hopefully that's the only one. Right, it's leaking right under here. I can feel it dripping. Down there, so they're not as. Yes. That one down there's a little bent. Do you want a glove? Are you ready to hand me one when I ask you? Right hand? Just be ready to. Ooh, it may sound. It's an instrument. The propane. So. I don't want a phone powered by propane. But uh, but uh. <laughs> like the sousaphone, but propane. No, I'm talking about like a cell phone. No, was, powered by propane. Well, you said an instrument powered by propane. I know, but then you said phone. Well, yeah, like a sousaphone. Yeah, but... Or a trombone. I thought a cell phone. Or a trombone. Trumpetone! Mom, you got any trumpetones? Those aren't things. What? I know they're no, not things. You, you didn't hear our conversation from earlier. You don't get the con... When I'm tired, my mind's weird. Yeah. Kershnubbly, that was the word. Okay. What? <laughs> <laughs> what? Why were you thinking what? Remember this morning when I told you you weren't a Kershnubbly? Oh. Yeah. Yeah, how did we get there from my mind's weird Well, night? I've been trying ever since we left to remember what that word was, and I just remembered. Oh, you need glove? Careful, you're going at a bit of an angle. I can't. There we go. Got it. Got it. <gasps> okay, now to get the clamps. Would you like a Kirschnubbly? A Kirschnubbly? I don't know what that is. It's a morsel of food. A Kirschnubbly? <laughs> Where did that come from? Not old chip Christian Uplis. Just have a bit What's of What's a morsel of food? Yes. What's a morsel? A small amount. Okay. A Christian Uplis of chips. Just like okay. that Christian Uplis. So me and dad were looking up if words like befuzzled were a thing yeah. or if they were just a slang. Uh, I tell you. What? I don't even know if anybody would know it as slang. Uh, befuzzled is a word, so is confuzzled. Apparently, really? yeah, yeah. We didn't know these things. Confuzzled actually, we came up with them without even knowing they were real words. Confuzzled is in the dictionary. Confuzzled is in the dictionary. Yes. Seriously? And it's, and it's termed as a mix of confused and puzzled. <laughs> in here you thought you made it up. <laughs> confuzzled. If we said it to anyone, they thought they would think we made it up. I must have heard it somewhere. Um, Anyway, so Dad was looking up other really weird words, and he found Kershnubli. Kershnubli. <laughs> what does it mean? A morsel of food. Ouch. Would you like a Kershnubli? No. <laughs> I'd like more than a Kershnubli. Ow. Ow. That's Sorry. Hot? Yeah. Do you want a glove? <laughs> Why would I need gloves? So you don't burn your hands? He's resistant. You know, all the professionals wear gloves. Yeah, and they have hands that fit in their gloves. My hands are so small, the gloves almost end up being a 
liability instead of a hindrance. Or a hindrance. And then Dad and me came up with a sentence, Would you like a Christian update? And the person obviously reacts and like confused. It's like, oh, I'm sorry. I must have befuzzled you. <laughs> I know. The word confuzzled can be quite confuzzling. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you guys have too much time on your hands. <laughs> they don't. This is just what happens. <laughs> also, befuzzled doesn't just mean confused. It means confused and puzzled. It means it means um confused and enjoyment. What? He was befuzzled by his birthday surprise. <laughs> but you just used two different words. Sorry, bef befuzzled. Yeah. Oh, it means bemused and and confused. <sighs> oh, bemused is I think a combo of amused. Yeah, yeah. Somehow. It's 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 slight amusement. It's a combo and combo. Confusing. So like so so someone being befuzzled by their birthday party surprise, you know. Oh, this is so befuzzling. Except most people who actually use that word, me. Okay, Joe, and what reading was it when we got here? Uh, sixty-eight point nine. It increased by point one when we turned off. You know what? I read online that you're only supposed to leave it, pressure test it for three hours. Okay, turn it off. I call that good then. Just as I walked over here, Joden called it over and said, Mom, it rose 0.1. So 69.1. It rose 0.1 in about two hours. I really don't know whether to chalk that down to pipe expansion or an actual leak. Um, kind of think about, think on it. Maybe ask some folks we know. The water saga continues. Okay, I decided to ask my dad about it. Now that's kind of a Backstory to that. Dad is not well. He has frontal lobe dementia and uh, sometimes he is pretty confused. But um, he's had it's, good advice in the past. It's very interesting how when we were just trying to get the lid off the water meter, he was able to come out and explain ac uh, exactly how to do it. Now, he didn't do it himself. And it clearly was stressing him out. But it felt like having Dad back for a little bit. Um, Dad was the um, water manager, water engineer for Reno Water. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, that, that's what he did for a living. And so he knows all about water lines, water meters, leaks, the whole nine yards. So I decided to go in and see if uh, Dad would understand my question and be able to give me an answer. And I asked him about the 0.1 gallon over two hours, and he laughed and said, That's not much of a leak. I wouldn't worry about that. <laughs> You're never going to find it. And so um, that was nice to hear. Every once in a while it's nice to to know that dad is still in there somewhere so um, I might talk to another person or two but I, th I think he's right I've, I've read online that this pipe expands and sometimes you'll see fluctuations just from the pipe expanding and I also read online only to pressure test it for about three hours so no we didn't know we were doing overnight um, so we've turned it back on when we're ready to go in and test the plumbing inside We'll turn it on and uh, check the pecs coming. So I think, I think, our water line is hooked up. Let's hope. <laughs> let's <laughs> yes, hope. let's hope. We're getting really tired of the water line. It was, it's been five, 
five and a half months. Oh, maybe six. I don't know. Bad news. Okay. All right. Onward and 